at the moment we uh, cannot give out that much information, but we can confirm that a member of parliament has been detained this morning. Uh, he is uh, suspected of accepting bribes, uh, committing uh, official coercion, and abusing his position as an MP. Um, this suspect uh, was also arrested in the past on suspicion of uh, comparable facts, but that was in connection with another investigation. Mm -hmm. So you are saying that uh, this investigation is totally different to the prior investigation which also led to his detention? Yes, this is a different in investigation. The crimes or the suspected crimes that he has done are supposed to be similar, comparable to the one investigation before that, but this is a new investigation. I haven't said that now. What is this investigation all about? Unfortunately, I cannot uh, elaborate on this investigation. Uh, we have to... Um, maintain everything that will be said only in the press of these, but uh, in a future time, a future date, we'll be able to elaborate more on that. But at this present time, we cannot say any more. At this time, you know, we I, I learned of the unfortunate news uh, this morning, uh, along with the, the rest of the public, really. Um, at this point, uh, to be frank, we really just don't have much information as yet. Um, the party has been trying to get some more information. So at this time, all I'll say is we're wishing MP France, uh, leader of our party, all the best. Uh, we hope that justice is, is going to be taking its course fairly for him. And um, once we have more information, perhaps we can come up with a, a better statement. But for now, that's, that's basically all I can say at this time. Well, I have a very serious concern uh, as far as the teaching staff is concerned. Uh, in the sense that uh, every year we face, we are faced with a shortage of, of teachers, both at the primary and also at the secondary uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, it doesn't. I don't. I do not sense that the the, the, the academic authorities doing more all that what they can to make sure that from the beginning of the school year, all teachers are in position and are ready to carry out their their, their mission. Last year, we had a very ugly or unacceptable situation where uh, it was all the way down in April, April month, uh, that the children who were going to their final exam didn't have a French teacher uh, and, and or a biology teacher. And these are not situations that I'm prepared to witness because my son is also concerned about that. So we as parents and, and also as uh, political uh, leaders in the country have to be uh, forceful in, ter in terms of making sure that our priorities, the education our priorities, live up to, to, to expectation in terms of providing the, the, the teaching staff so that teach the children of St. Martin can get the, you know, what is entitled uh, to them. Uh, so that is a matter that I would be looking at very, very, very seriously. And while I'm at it, let me also bring it, bring to everyone's attention that when I was in France some months ago, I had an interesting conversation with many young teachers who are in now in different academies uh, in France, and their wish or their only urgent aspiration is to come back home and to be part of the whole teaching staff on St. Martin. And here they are stuck because uh, every time they make the request to, to be transferred to Guadeloupe, there's all kind of technicalities coming up in the discussions. In other words, they deliberately refuse the opportunity to come back home to study. On my way back, I uh, I sent a letter to both the rector of the academy in Guadeloupe, the head of the educational department, and also I sent a copy to the prefect, uh, Madame Fischer, mm -hmm. highlighting this urgent issue uh, with the hope that they will really act um, urgently and do something about it in order in order in order to facilitate the return of young St. Martinus. Uh, to the teach to be part of the teaching staff on St. Martin, especially if both the academy and the prefecture are strongly uh, adhering to the idea that we need to go towards bilingual education, in other words, the possibility to learn both the French and the English language in the school system. Now that that is guaranteed and, and is uh, confirmed, I am saying that we now to look at the areas or the measures needed, and to me the first step is to make sure that the teaching staff is equipped to handle or to master both languages in the school system. And here we have teachers from St. Martin interested, willing, and there's no response. So 
I'm questioning whether it's a lip service or if there's really a clear intention to make this become a reality uh, on St. Martin. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank, discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. -E. Are you ready? Campaign and help for more than 10,000 households still need it. Fire Chief National Disaster Coordinator Mr. Clive Richardson in the press release of August 12th said that the team for the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season is Are You Ready? He called not only on businesses and business owners in the tourism sector, but also on residents to pay keen attention to weather reports and to be alert and vigilant. On August the 16th, DICOM invited representatives of community councils as well as representatives of some vulnerable groups, among which our coordinator or a co-coordinator of the anti-poverty platform to discuss the communication flow to prepare the citizens before, during and after a hurricane. The main concerns of the representative was what has the government done with the questions, suggestions and issues raised before the various organizations to reduce the risk of disaster in each community. The head of the DCOM registered all the observations to bring to the attention of the meeting of the Emergency Operations Center, the EOC. The representatives suggested that it would be better for those in Coban to come to the meeting with the representatives and that those in Coban address immediately the concerns of the concerned representatives to resolve the issues and to reduce the risk for disaster. This request of the representatives did not appear in the press release from DCOM about the meeting. Representatives of the community-based organizations 
reported dangerous situations in their district. For instance, Irma destroyed homes which could become a hazard when another hurricane or a storm hits St. Martin. The representatives of the Cape Community Council mentioned how many times they have brought up the dangerous situation of the neighborhood in the near vicinity of very explosive fuels and gases. Until now, no emergency plan or no emergency drills or guarantees for protection of life in the neighborhood was provided. As Anti-Poverty Platform Consumer Coalition, we will request a meeting with the Emergency Operation Command Center to address the concerns of the community-based organizations and the community councils to reduce the disaster risk and prepare our citizens better for hurricanes or earthquakes. Launch of the Affordable Food and Nutrition Program now on September 7. We have um, postponed the, the health and fruit fruit and vegetable fair with another week. Um, the launch of the Affordable Health Food and Nutrition Program will now take place next week, Saturday, September 7. Due to the fact that the container with fruits, vegetables and provision will arrive on the week of September 7. Who can benefit from the health, fruit and vegetable fair? All members, the unions affiliated to the Windward Island Chamber of Unions, which are the Windward Island Federation of um, Organized Labor, which is the WIFOL, the Windward Island Civil Servants Union um, slash Private Sector Union, which is the WICSU PSU, the Windward Island Teachers Unions, which is the WITU, which is the Teachers Union, sorry, St. Martin Communications Union, Windward Island Hosp uh, Hospital Union, the National Police Union, uh, NRBP, and ABVO Civil Servants. The Seniors for the St. Martin Seniors and Pensioners Association, the organization affiliated to the St. Martin NGO Federation, SUNFED. Consumers who want to become a member of the above-mentioned organizations can also, when they register with the organizations, consumers can also register with the United Consumer Association to benefit from the program. The program launch is um, for next week, um, September 7th, but the program will have a duration of three months. The health fruits and vegetable fair, as well as the produce, will be available in front of the Weifel building at the Walton Esbet Road. Hey ma, how you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is? <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. 
I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want. I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24 seven. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now, but I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Bib now. All right, darling. You know who you're for? <laughs> I need to know who you are. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices, the Winwood Islands Bank, now your online banking partner in progress. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina, and I play football with the Walichi Women's Soccer Team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women's Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba, and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy, and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and will help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag Sports Matter. Hashtag Are You In? When we, when we consider the information that is shared about the island of Haiti, uh, of San Domingo, however you want to call it. It is always from the position that the people are poor, beggars, or they are caught up in some sort of odious um, activity that is responsible for their current poverty. Whereas, based on the, the documentary we looked at, we see that um, the Haitian Revolution coming out of plantation slavery was a direct result of the oppression that the people experience day in and day out. And it was only after when the people decided that enough is enough were they able to organize themselves in order to free themselves. They did not wait for anyone to give them handouts. They did not wait for anyone to give them permission. They stretched out, right, and grabbed their freedom with both hands. And what we have seen is that Afterwards, as soon as they grabbed for their freedom, as soon as they took their liberty, we saw the concerted efforts of the different European powers to find different ways and means to keep the people impoverished. And I think that is very important when we consider the current situation of St. Martin, or rather the Caribbean as a whole. It is only until the people make up in their minds that they have had enough of the colonial situation or of the imperialistic agenda from the European powers, then we can begin to change the, the, the relationship, let's say, between St. Martin and the European metropoles. What is also insightful is that the, the, the people at the time, the, the Africans in Haiti, they did not talk about we need a plan, we need this, we don't have that. They did not have that discussion. What they knew and what they agreed upon was that we need to be free now. Those questions can always be answered afterwards. St. Martin has the people, St. Martin has the brains, we have the capacity in order to direct our own affairs. What is also in, in, insightful with the film was that the people relied on their own powers to free themselves. And the freedom and the revolution took place on different levels. There was a spiritual aspect, there was an economic aspect, there was a cultural aspect, there was a, a, um, a biological or a natural aspect, and they employed all of those approaches in order to win their freedom. 
And to me, the biggest takeaway was that it was not the leaders who freed the people. It was the people who freed themselves. So this thing about we have to wait for someone to stand up and declare themselves a leader, we have to rethink that approach. Because at the end of the day, it is the people who will decide how far this nation will go. So those are just some of the, the connections that I was able to gather from the film. And again, um, growing up as a young man, we were taught to, to somehow look down uh, on, on our Haitian brothers and sisters, or, or the Caribbean, because we have a, a Dutch passport, because of what other um, symbolic benefits that we believe we have. And based on this, many persons in the audience um, admitted um, not being familiar with this particular struggle, but whom I believe have developed a greater appreciation for what the people in Haiti did, not only for Haiti, not only for the Caribbean, but also for the Americas, meaning North America, Central America, and, 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 and South America. And I think this is part of the discussion that we as a people need to have, not seeing ourselves as isolated, but we have to see that we are part of the greater Caribbean region. So whatever happens in Jamaica, in Grenada, in Barbados, in Cuba, can have a ripple effect on us here also. So we have to find ways to link ourselves with the struggle and not see ourselves only with our faces pointed towards The Hague or pointed towards um, Paris. We have to draw closer with our Caribbean brothers and sisters. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Jose Alaga and I play basketball. I have organized basketball events in St. Martin. Sport matters to me because it makes everybody come together in unity. So I challenge the businesses community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facility. I'm also asking the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take on the challenge and step up for sports because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sports SSN Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter, hashtag are you in. case uh, persons do not understand the way to develop a mindset of let's say a banker yes you have to have the business aspect and business mind in place as when you're operating your business but um, one need to know that if, if dealing and speaking with a banker that they should learn to then think like a banker and what they are concerned about so that they could be prepared just uh, for those instances Based on the information as was provided by your person tonight, um, are you feeling that a uh, person's in attendance uh, living better equipped in that they're able to uh, prepare themselves to at least apply for loan? Oh, hundred um, percent. That exactly. That is uh, exactly what the workshop is intended to do. Um, for some persons that may have, um, let's say, acquired in the past 70% uh, of information that they should know in order to apply for a loan, they have definitely got the last 30% here tonight uh, with us at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and again, when applying for loans, there is no one answer fit all. Uh, but in this workshop, uh, we have definitely got uh, the listeners prepared. Uh, 
uh, to be prepared for the loan as best as they could. You spoke of the need to be very confident, especially walking into the offices of a banker. Why must someone always be so confident? Maybe you can explain that to us. Oh, definitely. Uh, confidence is not only to walk in the specific room uh, with the loan officer, but confidence plays a big role, let's say, in business in particular. Uh, if I do not assume as a loan officer that you do not have the confidence to face me in person, then I would also assume that you wouldn't have the same confidence to face persons that you would love to do business with. Um, also, confidence shows um, not only confidence to say in dealing or, or speaking with me, but it shows that you have confidence in the venture that you would like to also take. If I sense, me as a loan officer, sense that you yourself doesn't have confidence uh, in your own business or plan, then it would be kind of difficult then for me to have the same, uh, or to even have enough confidence to offer or issue any type of loan or investment. I would, I would sense just too much risk in such uh, a venture. At credits, what do you do as an organization? I mean, are you equipped to make loans available as well to persons wanting to acquire? You spoke of personal loans. What about business loans at your establishment? No, actually, at, at our establishment, we only offer business loans. We do not offer any um, personal loans uh, nor mortgages. We only offer business loans up to 25 U.S. dollars. Uh, your question, though, pertaining, I just had to correct you there for, for one second prior to respond. You basically answered the question. I was um, inquiring as to exactly what do you offer. Do you offer business or Personal loans. Yes, yes. We only offer business loans up to 25 U.S. Uh, dollars. For, as you could tell, uh, since it's only um, 25,000 U.S. dollars, you would assume that if it's a startup business, uh, this business would then be ra a rather small business, but one with the potential to grow into a, a big one in the future. Mm -hmm.